The basic distinction I would like to begin with is that between risk and uncertainty. It is a distinction that is too often overlooked. A situation of risk is one where we have perfect knowledge about all future states of the world, their consequences and probabilities. It is uh, basically, if you play the roulette, nothing unexpected can ever happen. You know everything. And that's where most of economic models are made for. It's the Aero de Bru or in finance, the Merton Markowitz uh, uh, agenda. And this is also a world which is stable, where tomorrow is like yesterday, is the best world for big data and complex algorithms. So in astronomy, big data is highly successful because the movement of the planets is highly stable relative to our short lives. But that not, does not extend to situations of uncertainty. Uncertainty uh, is most of our real world where the future states cannot be perfectly foreseen. That's how to decide whom to hire, whom to fire, where to invest or whom to marry. Unexpected things can happen. In these situations where one cannot calculate the risk exactly, more is needed. And the two tools I will talk about are heuristics, which are robust, often called fast and frugal heuristics, because they allow quick decision making, and also intuition, here the unconscious use of heuristics. So let me start with an example from sports. The example will make clear that a heuristic is nothing irrational, as much of behavioral econ economics still claims, but it is an, uh, an smart policy to make decisions under uncertainty. So the example is about sports. So who of you plays baseball or maybe cricket in India or, or soccer? So imagine a situation where a ball comes in high and an experienced player knows where to run to catch or stop the ball. How does he or she know? Now there are two theories. One is it's a complex problem. We need a complex solution. And the complex solution might be to calculate the trajectory of the ball. Have you ever calculated a trajectory? It goes like this. And the problem is not calculation, it's estimation. We can calculate today almost everything, but not estimate. So for instance, to estimate alpha, the original angle with which the ball has been kicked or thrown. And you may also notice that I have left out a few important variables from the equations just to make it simpler. There's no wind, there's no spin. Nevertheless, how else could a ball player catch a ball? Now, experiments with experienced players show that they don't calculate trajectory, consciously or unconsciously, but rely on a set of simple heuristics. And I show you the simplest one which works if the ball is already high in the air. It has three parts. The gaze heuristic tells the player, fix your gaze on the ball, start running and adjust your running speed so that the angle of gaze remains constant. This player here does exactly that. Watch the player, the angle of gaze will remain constant. So it's running in a way that the angle of gaze is constant. What happens? The player ends up exactly where the ball is coming down. Do you want to see it again? The important thing is that the player can ignore all the variables in the trajectory equations and also those I left out. And focus only on a single variable, the angle of gaze. And you can see that this heuristic is faster than 
trying to calculate and estimate. It is more reliable because you don't make the estimation errors. And also, it's transparent. You can teach uh, novices to use a heuristic. The players usually use these heuristics intuitively. That is, they know what to do, but they cannot explain. So intuition means that you have a, a, an idea comes up here yeah, and you think that's what you do, but it's not in language. You can't explain it. In our research, we study experts like ball players, but also other experts, and uh, uh, work out the heuristics they use, make them explicit in order to teach others to use this consciously. Here's an example for the gaze heuristic. You may remember the miracle on the Hudson River. A plane started, took off in LaGuardia Airport, and a few minutes later, something unexpected happened. A flock of Canada geese collided with the plane. And the jet engines are built in a way that they can digest birds, but not Canada geese, as they are too fat. And the, the unexpected thing was that they flew in Bose engines, which shut down. The pilots, Sullenberger and Skiles, immediately turned around and had to make a decision of life and death. Will we make it to another airport? Or do we have to take a risky option like going into the Hudson River? How did they make the decision? Did they estimate and calculate the trajectory of the sailing plane? No, they used the same gaze heuristic as the player. In that case, the pilot looks through the windshield in the cockpit and focuses, say, the tower of the airport. And if the tower goes up in the windshield, then you will not make it, you will hit in before. And that uh, decision can be made without se within seconds, and it's safer than all kind of calculations, which always may have errors. And at the end, all the people were saved by a combination between simple heuristics and, on the other hand, checklists and other things which are not of heuristic nature. So the general point is, hmm, in many situations, we arrive at the best decisions if you combine smart heuristics that are often intuitively used and the data that we have.